in this video, we're going to talk about when you should be mixing or when you should not be mixing before editing your tracks. Hi, my name is Joey Sturgis and welcome to the Joey Sturgis Tones YouTube channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And to all my subscribers, welcome back. Don't forget to like this video and ring the bell to get notified when we upload new videos. So let's dive into it. Now the standard workflow for most sessions is straightforward. First, you need to record something. Second, you got to edit those tracks, clean up the problems, uh, tune the out of tune parts and pocket each of your instruments. And third is the mix before you finally wrap up with, you guessed it, mastering. While several of these steps might be broken out into parts, such as separate tracking and overdub sessions, for the most part, this is the workflow that we've all come to know. And there are parts that you simply cannot rearrange. Without something getting tracked, there's nothing to mix, and without something mixed, there's, you know, there's nothing to master. But sometimes, engineers and producers might play around with the timing of the editing and the mixing parts of the process uh, if it makes sense for that session. Let's take a look at when that might be a good idea. So let's begin with starting from a static mix. If you're opening up a session for the first time, creating a static mix might be one of the most helpful approaches rather than jumping right into the edits. By creating a static mix first, you're accomplishing two main things. The first is that you're creating instant familiarity with the session. Rather than having to go you know, track by track, listening for the edits that need to be made, you're hearing them in real time as you're building your static mix. You might be taking notes as you build your static mix, but by working at a much faster rate in this manner. This can be essential if you never heard the song before. The other major benefit is that you're giving yourself context from the start. Editing in isolation could be tricky, and things don't play off each other the same way if you've edited them one at a time versus your first real playthrough of the song that comes after all the edits have been made together. The benefit is especially noticeable when it comes to pocketing and timing your tracks. Uh, something that sounds slightly off-grid in isolation could have been 100% intentional to play off of another instrument somewhere in the song. So without context, you really have no way of knowing that. So what goes into a static mix? I remember the first time I tried to create a static mix, it took me like four hours. It might take you four hours too your first time, but eventually you're gonna learn that you really only need to spend like 15 minutes on this step. So a static mix should be a quick and easy thing to create for engineers. You're not trying to make it sound perfect, just good enough to work with uh, by setting levels generally where you'd like them to be. And quick settings for static mixes include setting levels, panning, basic dynamic processing and EQ and compression. And how you set these now just need to get you into the ballpark. And you'll be changing them and creating a more dialed in sound after you're doing the editing. I also like to include a lot of my routing and grouping options right from the static mix as well. So by having my buses set up for guitars and drums, etc., I can add the basic glue needed to pre-edit so that, you know, I can really hear what my groups will sound like later in the mix. Uh, bus compression for each group is common. By having a dedicated reverb and delay to send tracks uh, can be really helpful even if I plan on replacing them later. It's just to get a vibe for what the song is going to sound like and how the edits are going to play into, you know, those, those uh, reverbs and delays. Um, most static mixes should only take about 15 to 20 minutes to set up, but they'll save you hours of editing time. You're not going to worry about any kind of automation at this point. Save that for the actual mix. Just set up something quick as if you were mixing the song on the fly. And just that little bit of context you're giving yourself is going to go a long way. Now don't combine editing with mixing. Seriously, just don't do it. You know, the big thing that people don't understand about this is that these processes take two different parts of your brain to execute and when you try to do them at the same time, you slow yourself down. Notice that as we've been talking through this, I've only discussed the mix before and after the editing stage. This is a key part of taking this approach. It's a waste of time to try and do both of them at the same time. Many mixers think they can cut corners by killing two birds with one stone. They think if I can mix and edit at the same time, wouldn't that cut my work in half? In reality, it cuts the quality of your final result in half or ends up making you take twice as long to get to the same point. So the reason for this is simple. Switching between technical and creative approaches kills your ability to do both well. And when you're editing, your mind is in analysis mode. You're seeking out problems and finding solutions. When mixing, it's switching to creativity. You might be seeking out problems and solutions, but for the most part, you're actually focused on the art of the mix. You're painting with broad and narrow strokes to create great sounding individual instruments that combine into a full and complete mix. So do yourself a favor and keep the two separate and doing so will give you better edits and better mixes. 
So if you're someone who's struggled to keep uh, your mixes and edits separate, you might be in too deep to see what's really holding your productions back. Sometimes getting feedback from professionals in the genre that you're working with can uh, actually make a huge difference. JST VIP members get access to exclusive courses, tutorials, and plugins, and they also get direct access to mix crits from Billy Decker and myself. If you've uh, ever struggled with a metal or rock track, send it my way. If you're looking for feedback on a country or pop song, Billy's your guy. Either way, we'll tell you exactly what's working and what's not to help keep your mixes moving in the right direction. You can sign up for this program today. The link is in the description below, or just go to joeysturgistones.vip slash join and we'll see you there. That's it for today, guys. See you on the next video. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. If you got another audio buddy who would love this content, please share it. Hit the bell and get notified when we upload new videos, and don't forget to click the link in the description below before you go. You're the best. See you soon.